In my, in my chapter, um, uh, my planned chapter, uh, I'm, I'm going to cover two different dimensions. The first one is the uh, tra trajectory of the modern uh, development on Islamic ethics. And the second one is uh, the, a thematic one, which is uh, going to focus on the key themes within the Islamic, the discipl different disciplines of Islamic knowledge. Uh, but in this presentation, because of the limit, limit, limited time that we have, uh, so I'm going to cover only the first dimension, which is a historical one, not a thematic one. So in this presentation, I'm going to uh, cover, uh, start with uh, um, uh, general remarks uh, as an introduction, and uh, then I'll, I'm going to move to the trajectory of uh, mod the modern uh, scholarship on Islamic ethics, and then, uh, you know, the concept and the discipline, uh, um, um, or ethics as, as a concept as, uh, and as a discipline, and then finally I'm going to conclude uh, with some notes. Ah. Sorry. Okay. Um, as for the introductory remarks, in, in, the in 1997, uh, Dimitri Gotas wrote the following, quote, ethics is not an easy uh, subject to study in the context of Islamic, uh, uh, Islamic civilization, uh, end of the quote. Uh, the science of ethics has become uh, an area of controversy in the modern era due to several elements um, a, its uh, terms such as akhlaq in Arabic, ethics in English, and there is a discussion about whether ethics is, is the, the, the right translation for akhlaq, um, and the difference between ethics and mor morals, um, uh, and also ahkam uh, sharia, um, makarim sharia, you know, makarim um, sharia, the uh, noble characters, ahkam sharia, sharia law. Uh, uh, um, makarim sharia, um, uh, noble traits of the, the law, uh, adab, good manners. So what's, what's, how, to, how do you define all these terms uh, and what are the differences? Um, um, so I, I, I support the same idea, you know, the, with the Quran, uh, but in the Islamic tradition they are not synony synonymous, uh, so we cannot use them ch interchangeably. So I, th I believe that there's, there are differences between these terms. So, but all these terms are, uh, come under the umbrella of what we call morality in general. Um, this is about A. B, uh, um, did I, oh. sorry, because of this confusion. Oh, it, it moves along. Okay. Yeah. Ah, I don't know what's happening here. Ah, maybe the computer is uh, <laughs> is from the ancient ages. <laughs> maybe this is not the right. Okay, I will use the. I will use this one. Maybe it's better. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, this one. Okay, uh, B, 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 uh, so it is a controversial area because of its terms that I already mentioned and um, its independence from other disciplines. How do you define or identify the relationship between ethics and other disciplines within the Islamic tradition? Uh, and third, or C, um, because its connection to other disciplines uh, and, and the independence, whether it is in, an independent or a distinct area or discipline, or uh, and how, how what is its placement within the Islamic tradition in the, in the Islamic knowledge? Because usual, I think we are the, the only college of Islamic studies that we teach. Uh, we have this ethics as Islamic ethics as a specialization within the Islamic studies, but usually in all the colleges in the Arab world, at least. They, they study ethics as, as a branch of philosophy, not as a branch of Islamic studies. Um, um, so all, th th these are just uh, some key ideas why it is, it is a controversial uh, 
um, um, era, uh, area the, the, in the modern time. So, but modern interests in uh, modern interest um, uh, in the field of Islamic ethics has raised a number of questions, such as has ethics originated as a discipline in the Islamic in, in the Islamic tradition? Is there an Islamic moral philosophy? Or is a Greek moral philosophy the only way to approach ethics? Um, how do we historicize Islamic ethical thought? And is its sources rich or scarce? Um, how do we classify the existing ethical literature? So all these questions are raised within the contemporary or the modern uh, uh, scholarship on Islamic ethics. Now I'm going to move to the second part of my lecture, a trajectory uh, of the modern scholarship on Islamic ethics. The modern discussion on Islamic ethics began towards the end of the 20th century, 19th century and the 20th, uh, throughout the 20th century. So I will only shed light on some milestones of the development of Islamic ethics by starting with the three editions of the Encyclopedia of Islam, uh, because uh, it reflects uh, the developments of Islamic ethics and how it was approached. And then I, I'm going to move to uh, the, the other development during the 20th century. So let's start with the three editions of the Encyclopedia of Islam. In the first edition, of, uh, uh, published 1913, one entry was devoted to ethics, to Islamic ethics, of course, under the title Akhlaq, written by Bernard Cardivo. Okay, so it moves. Okay, um, so uh, Divo confined the science of the Akhlaq to the Greek tradition and said, Quote, the doctrine of the akhlaq is nothing but the ethics of the perpetetic philosophy. End of the quote. He also argued that the science of moral philosophy, ilm al-akhlaq, has an existence of its own. It is not an extract from different literary works. It is a science which is, in fact, connected with the tradition of Greek philosophy. End of the quote. He concluded that the Muslim authors who have written in a methodical manner about moral philosophy are comparatively few. So, in the second edition, it was published in 1960, the field of akhlaq had, was expanded and the entry was divided into two sections. One, Survey of Ethics in Islam, written by Richard Walzer and Jeb. And B, or the second section, is on Philosophical Ethics, written by Richard Walzer alone. In the structure presented by both Walzer and Jeb about ethics in Islam, the scope of ethical thought was expanded to include additional elements and different traditions, including the pre-Islamic tradition, the Quran and Hadith, and Persian and Greek elements. In their view, the Islamic ethical tradition created, quote, an interesting and, on the whole, successful amalgamation, end of the quote. Additionally, these traditions coexisted for a long time in varying strength, and ethics was expanded and pointed to in immense detail by the traditionists in the form of hadith, which in itself expanded with two movements, the Mu'tazilites, who opposed Jabr, predestination, and Sufis, who opposed Al-Aql, reason. Although the two sections in the Encyclopedia of Islam, Survey of Ethics in Islam and Philosophical Ethics, have been since separated, 
philosophical ethics stayed dominant over the former section. Walser and Jeb contended that Islamic ethics did not take shape and stabilize until the 5th Hijri century. In the third edition of the Encyclopedia of Islam, which was started in 2007 until now, uh, still in progress, uh, the Encyclopedia dedicated five entries for ethics. In uh, these, uh, these entries tit are titled Ethics in Sufism, Ethics in Philosophy, Ethics in Jurisprudence, Theological Ethics, and Islamic Bioethics. They only published two entries so far. Sufi, Ethics in Sufism, and, and uh, Ethics in Philosophy. Uh, so these three editions these three editions of the Encyclopedia of Islam reflect the following in the first edition there is an obvious bias towards the Greek understanding of ethics and a rejection to including any understandings from other disciplines to what ethics is perceived to be in the second edition the definition of ethics was expanded because of the idea that there are various moral traditions within the Islamic civilization. I mean pre-Islamic Arabia, Islamic, Islamic and, and foreign sources, Persian, mainly Persian and Greek. And, uh, um, and that they coexisted together. The Greek philosophical ethics or the Greek philosophical approach to ethics remained dominant in this understanding of ethics in Islam. In the third edition, ethics became an interdisciplinary field, including philosophy, kalam, jurisprudence, and Sufism. And the field also expanded to encompass applied ethics, in this case, bioethics, Islamic bioethics. We can say that the encyclopedia's development, which spread over a long period of time from 1913 till, till now, reflect developments in the field of ethics, of Islamic ethics. Now, through this period, the 20th century and the 21st century, there, uh, many developments happened. So in Egypt during the 1940s, there were two different movements in ethical thought. One, wa one that was heavily influenced by the, uh, uh, the narrow definition of ethics that was based on the first edition of the Encyclopedia. This movement was uh, led by Muhammad Yusuf Musa in the 1940s in Al-Azhar, uh, who studied in Paris. Uh, uh, and who attempted to historicize Islamic ethics and explored its, its relevance to Greek philosophy as he was influenced by uh, a Greek approach to ethics. And the second movement freed itself from the Greek uh, perspective and criticized the Greek perspective of ethics. In doing so, it established the ethics of the Quran. This movement was represented by Muhammad Abdullah Draz, who, who, made, uh, who, who did his PhD in, in Paris with Messignon uh, in 1947. So Draz uh, attempted to build a Quranic ethical theory that revolved Kant's theory, deontology. Draz concluded that Quranic ethics is a form of deontology and good. Many later studies were uh, conducted based on this second understanding. In the 1953, Donaldson, Mag uh, Dwight Donaldson published the first English language study specialized in Islamic ethics. He clarified in his introduction that Islam, quote, Islamic literature on ethics covers a very wide field. And with this, he, clarify, he clearly, uh, end of the quote, and with this he clarify, he clearly avoided the Devo's uh, uh, understanding of Islamic ethics. 
He ex examined ethical discussions from different disciplines of Islamic tradition, such as the works of major Sufis and Persian poets. In 1969, Ahmed Mahmoud Subhi analyzed the ethical approach, approaches in Islamic uh, philosophy to respond to an idea that has spread among scholars prior to him, that there is no philosophy or ethical discipline in Islamic thought. So he was reacting on this idea. This idea was especially popular with Ahmed Amin, who was influenced by the writings of early Orientalists. So Subhi in, in, uh, integrated between Sufism and Kalam to prove that there is an Islamic moral philosophy found in the rationalist school, the Mu'tazilites, and the spiritualist uh, school, the Sufis. And the that the approach that Aristotle outlined for ethics is not binding. At the beginning of the 1970s, group, uh, George Horani uh, uh, prompted a discussion about theological ethics based on his research on the ethics of uh, uh, the Mu'tazilite Qadi uh, Abdul Jabbar. Afterward, the discussion about theological ethics were expanded to the point that they almost dominated earlier discussions on Islamic ethics. In the 1980s, in the 1980, in 1980s, ethical discussions widened to include new fields such as fiqh, Islamic jurisprudence, especially with uh, Fazlur Rahman and, and others uh, in, in the beginning of the 80s. Uh, and Muhammad Arkun notably went beyond the philosophical analysis and incorporated social, political, and cultural dimensions to the field of Islamic ethics. Also in the, in the 80s, Abdul Hay Qabil followed Subhi's footsteps and added to the field by producing a book ex to explain that there is indeed an Islamic moral philosophy. He also concluded that the major ethical theories in the Islamic tradition revolve around obligation and happiness. This also brings to mind the two major theories that dominated modern Western discussions after Kant, teleology and deontology. After that, there were two major developments in the 90s. The first development was introducing Islamic legal theory, usul al-fiqh, to the, the ethical philosophical discussions. This is when John Kelsey published an analytical review of al-Shafi'i's book, Al-Risala, because according to him, Al-Risala rep uh, represents an example of divine command theory. Taha Abdul Rahman, in the beginning of the 90s, then developed the idea of the existence of Islamic philosophy, ethical philosophy, but he explained that it, it already existed through usul al-fiqh and maqasid al-shari'ah, higher objectives of sharia. So the second development in the 90s was when Majid Fakhri, in 1991, introduced four types of Islamic ethical traditions in his book, titled Ethical Theories in Islam. According to Fakhri, there are scriptural morality, theological ethics, philosophical ethics, and what he called religious ethics. And he built his book on these four uh, divisions or um, um, categories. In 2001, Muhammad Abdel Jabir proposed what he called historicizing the Arab Moral, Arabic moral reason, al-aql al-akhlaqi al-arabi, and he distinguished between different ethical traditions, Persian, Greek, Arabic, and Islamic. However, this work uh, uh, reverted back to the narrow concept of ethics that was heavily influenced by philosophy on one side and the idea of originality, al-asala, on the other side. This ideology completely 
disregarded the fields of Quran, Hadith, Fiqh, and Usul Fiqh. Al Jabiri did not benefit from any of the previous studies mentioned above and did not develop or build upon any of them. Now let's move to the third part of the lecture to trace the, the development of the concept and the, the discipline. This historical approach that I provided so far demonstrates two understandings of Islamic ethics. One, the first understanding, limiting ethics to Greek philosophical ethics or uh, thought, which signifies the, the traits of man's moral character, whether it is praiseworthy or blameworthy good or bad. This perspective defines ethics as a state of the soul, which is the definition that Galen used, followed by the definition of Miskawai, Al-Asfahani, Al-Ghazali, and others. Based on this definition, ethics was categorized as a branch of practical wisdom, Al-Hikmah Al-Amaliyya, according to Al-Farabi, for example, and other philosophers. This is why it, in the classical Islamic tradition, the term khuluq has two meanings. N nature, tabi' and habit, ada, which is based on the Greek root. Accordingly, akhlaq was similarly divided into two types in the classical works, Islamic works. Number one is natural, tabi'i, akhlaq tabi'iyya, and acquired akhlaq muktasaba, acquired ethics. The second understanding of ethics, or Islamic ethics, liberates the field from its confinement to Greek thought and diversifies research about ethics in the Islamic tradition to include two major elements. A, different traditions and sources that contributed to the making of ethical thought, Arabic, Islamic, Persian, and Greek. This approach has prompted different questions, such as examining different ethical approaches and the period of their evolvement and the integration between them. And searching for originality in the Islamic ethical traditions, uh, tradition and its relation to other traditions, Persian and Greek. B is exploring the characteristics of Islamic ethical thought in different disciplines of Islamic knowledge, where we can f differentiate between two approaches that focused on the pursuit of theoretical ethics in the Islamic thought. These are theory-based ethics and discipline-based based ethics. As for the theory-based ethics, it, it delves into theories inside the tradition itself. And here we can see that many attempts have, have uh, uh, many theories that have, uh, 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 have been made to explore Islamic theories from within the tradition in an attempt to find theories parallel to the primary Western theories such as Al-Aqliyun and Al-Dawqiyun, rationalist and spiritualist by Subhi, who focused on Kalam and Sufism, as well as Al-Wajib wa Al-Sa'ada, Obligation and Happiness by Qabil, who has tried to interpret these ideas through multiple Islamic st uh, uh, studies fields, or to explore ethical theories based on, on, on the Quran, like Draz, uh, Draz's work, or to explore the ethical theory from uh, the perspective of specific field like Kalam, or um, such as the theories of ethical voluntarism and rationalism, uh, uh, um, or Islamic jurisprudence and usul al-fiqh, including divine command theory and natural law, 
uh, or maqasid sharia such as divine command theory or common morality, etc. So uh, um, uh, as for the discipline-based ethics, it research, it researches, uh, it searches for different forms of ethical thought in the various fields of Islamic studies. Discipline-based ethics. Uh, uh, um, uh, is rep represented by um, many scholars in Egypt uh, um, and, and um, other countries like, um, and they focus uh, on the Quran, for example, or Hadith, or Usul Fuqh, or, uh, or Kalam. So they only focus on one discipline to, and search for the ethical dimensions in that discipline. Uh, this, is, this also showcases the shift from the classical definition of ethics as in good or bad, or innate disposition, character traits, to the new definition of ethics, which redirects us from a person and his traits to his actions. The ethical research then expanded both theoretically and practically because it shifted to discipline of one's action and motives rather than being confined to the virtues and vices of oneself. It is also no longer restricted to a person's lifestyle. Rather, it includes public if ethics intertwined with the rights of others in the public sphere and its relation to law and, and the questions that modernity has brought up or brought forth. We have now transcended the controversy that Devo began in the, the, the early 20th century when he refused to consider the science of akhlaq as an ex, 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 extract from different literary works. The basis of this transcendent, trans, transcendence are that historically ethics has focused on the agent, the soul and its powers and the virtues and vices. However, modern ethics focuses on discipline, disciplining actions and applied ethical issues have dominated fatwas and casuistry ethics. This brings us back to the previous ethical discussions in the various fields of Islamic knowledge, which also placed jurisprudence at the center of ethical discussions, especially in the field like Islamic bioethics. However, do, do, how much do I have? Uh, about 18 minutes. 18 minutes? Yeah. Okay, that's great. I thought I took so much more time. Okay. So, however, this expansion in ethical philosophy, apply, uh, uh, applied and theoretical, has led us to another, uh, another controversy introduced by Gotes towards the end of the 20th century, which is how to, I quote, how to define the nature and range of Islamic ethical thought without, on the one hand, importing and imposing upon it Western conceptual categories loaded because of the very nature of the subject with normative biases, and on the other, accepting so broad a definition for, for it by including every moral sentiment ever expressed as to rub, to rub it for, uh, to rub it of any meaningful specificity. In my opinion, we overcame this problem by the current development of the modern ethical discussions based in various Islamic disciplines, such as the Quran, Hadith, Fuqah, Usul Fuqah, and Maqasid al-Sharia and the overlap of theory and application in the field of ethics, as it is superficial to talk about applied ethics without having a solid theoretical foundation. This is clear from the varying quality of research in the field of bioethics, Islamic bioethics. Some are based on a theoretical foundation, while others de depend on general generalities that Islamize Western ideas. This combination of both theoretical and applied ethics is what we incorporate in our MA program in Applied Islamic Ethics and the Research Center for Islamic Legislation and, Legislation and Ethics at Hamad bin Khalifa University. So to conclude,
we in, in, in the MA program and the research center differentiate between two different methods and try clear, uh, to critically combine them. One, the interdisciplinary method where we utilize ethical thought in various fields of Islamic studies that relate to the topic in question at this, um, uh, as this offers a comprehensive understanding of the, the issue at hand. And two, the, the, the transdisciplinary method where, where we critically utilize modern Western disciplines like moral philosophy, uh, politics and economics, as well as biology, etc. Thus, akhlaq or Islamic ethics is, not, is no longer a historical science influenced by Greek philosophy or local practice, but a broad discipline open to modern discussions and rooted in the Islamic tradition. Thank you very much.